Get in, loser. We're doing CXL on Threadripper today. <laughs> what? What does that mean? You know how they say that TRX50 only supports a terabyte of memory, and that would be with four very expensive 256 gigabyte DIMMs? Nope. You can go beyond that by using a CXL module, which is also, to be clear, wildly expensive. But if you need a lot of memory, this might be an unofficial option. I'm surprised this works. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so I've written a forum thread that explains what's going on, but I've got the Gigabyte Aero D, TRX50 Aero D. This is version 1.1 of the board. There's actually three versions of this board, 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2. Um, I noticed that there are BIOS updates because we know that Threadripper 9000 is inbound. This video is being done right before the 9000 series CPUs are gonna release, I think. And so new viruses and firmware updates for these boards have shown up. And I always like to test those before I go hands-on with new processors because you never know which new behavior is because of the, <laughs> the new firmware or new features of the CPU or what's going on. Theoretically, AMD should just be swapping out the Zen 4 chiplets for Zen 5 chiplets, and you wouldn't really expect a lot of changes in the rest of the platform. But as I found when I was testing new faster DDR5 registered DIMMs from vColor, um, there does seem to be some changes under the hood with the uh, the BIOS in terms of memory compatibility. This is a 7980X 64 core running in our Aero D with DDR5 8000, and it's stable. So the hardware was capable of that all the time, because I can tell you on launch day, <laughs> anything beyond 6000, you didn't really, I mean, you're, this is, you're spending thousands of dollars on a machine. You don't really want to invite instability into your life. And yet, it's been pretty good. Uh, exceptions aside, like the V-Color 96 gig DDR5 8000 module doesn't have heat spreaders, and that is a problem because they will throttle after a while. Check out that video on the V-Color memory modules. The 7200 V-Color modules with the built-in heat spreaders works great. That's my first choice, actually. But the V-Color with the built-in heat spreaders work a lot better. But the DDR5 8000, I wanted to test because we can run that 2000 Infinity Fabric because the 8000-2000 ratio versus 7200 where you get like 1920 as a fabric ratio or something like that, which is pretty close. But this video is about CXL. So the CXL Compute Express Link, this is a PCIe card that has memory on it. And this one's from Smart Modular, and you can buy these. And they're expensive. I mean, at the time that I'm doing this video, around five grand, give or take. But also keep in mind, 512 gigabytes of memory, which is also thousands of dollars. So it's not really that much more expensive than 512 gigabytes of quality DDR5 memory is gonna cost you in the first place. So, eh. This system here, Linux, thinks we have uh, 96 plus 512 gigabytes of memory. And if we do Intel's memory latency checker, and we run memory latency testing, we can see that it's really not a lot different than uh, main memory bandwidth. In fact, the system can be configured to interleave where it's using some of the main memory and some of the CXL in a ratio that you specify. But now, because there's four times as much CXL memory as main memory, the CXL memory is much slower. I mean, you could be running DDR5 5600 for main memory in this platform and it really wouldn't make a difference. Putting memory through a PCIe slot. This PCIe slot is basically just as much memory bandwidth as one memory channel, just the one. So we've gone from a four memory channel platform to a five memory channel platform. And the memory latency uh, with a smart modular device, depending on how you measure a bunch of factors and blah, 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 is on the order of about 150 nanoseconds, give or take, which is absurdly fast for a PCIe card. Like there is no faster PCIe Gen 5 card available. It's using all 16 lanes. It is absurdly fast for PCIe 5, but from a memory context, it's a little pokey, a little slow from a memory context. But for people doing AI and that sort of thing, okay, maybe it makes sense. Actually, I think it would make more sense on the WRX90 platform than TRX50. But, you know, bleeding edge, I just want to see. Maybe you can get an, a really inexpensive DDR4 CXL module or something like that. Because 64 cores, there is plenty of CPU horsepower here to run an AI workload. In fact, with this CXL configuration, running 256 gigs 
natively and 256 gigs through PCIe for a total of 512 gigabytes. You can get about six tokens per second on a CPU bound uh, quantized four bit deep seek model. So you're running the full, you know, 700 billion parameter model in 380 ish gigabytes of memory and using an NVIDIA GPU for the KV cache context window and some other things, as we have shown how to do in the forum on past videos. And that runs fantastically well on this platform, whether that is 32 or 64 cores, which is amazing. I think 64 gig DIMMs are sort of affordable at this point. And so 64 gig DIMMs natively, again, it makes more sense to use native memory channels as much as you can. But I was sort of surprised that CXL uh, works as well as it does here. If you're a developer developing for CXL in the cloud or you're developing large memory devices, this as a development platform could be huge. In the BIOS, there are options under DF common options for how you want to configure the CXL. There's also a CXL common options that are exposed in this specific version of the BIOS. Now, I don't know if AMD is going to turn this off. I don't know if it's accidental. I don't know if, if a gigabyte has gone rogue here. We'll talk about other brands of motherboards in a minute because it's a little bit of a mixed bag, but it does, it does work. I'm able to use it in Linux, NUMA CTL. Now there's also in the guide in the forum, uh, another write up from, I think the memory consortium people about using NUMA CTL to specify weights and how you want to allocate CXL devices. Usually with CXL, you'd be using those as like no more than a third, uh, like a, a, a two to one ratio for system memory. So like if this thing has 512 gigabytes of memory, like maybe 192 gigabytes of, of CXL memory would make sense. I mean, you could run at a 50% ratio, so like 512, 256, uh, so that, you know, <laughs> in the overall pool of memory, two thirds of it is real memory. And the other third of it is the slower CXL interface. For AI workloads, it mostly doesn't depend on memory bandwidth. It depends on latency. And so anything that you can do to boost your latency in a large pool of memory will work great. And so you just add more memory and it's, it's fantastic. But when you're talking about interleaving, which is one of the BIOS options that's supported, it and uh, the ratio and the weights, it means that the system will try to use both at the same time. And that does actually boost memory bandwidth. We covered all this in another video. You can check that out if you want to do a deep dive on, on how CXL works and options for that. For real world workloads, I don't know that I would recommend this, at least until we have official word from AMD, if this is an official thing for Threadripper or not. And if it is an official thing for Threadripper, chances are it's an official thing for Threadripper on WRX90 and not TRX50. And it just happens to work on TRX50. But uh, yeah. Oh, also the PCIe slot matters. So you can't just use a CXL module in any PCIe slot. It has to be a PCIe slot that supports CXL. And you have to go, you really, this is not documented in the manual or anything. And the motherboard makers didn't even know this was a thing, I'm sure. But the PCIe lanes have to be routed to a PCIe port on the CPU that was designed for CXL in the first place. And depending on which board you have, not every slot is going to do that. The second slot on our ROD can do a CXL module. And it's a little crowded by our four slot Tai Chi GPU here, but our Tai Chi 7090 is uh, really quite the champ in Linux. And so being able to do this setup and everything in Linux and, and show this off was, was sort of a lot of fun. So I'm floored that this works. This is fantastic. And even though the hardware isn't quite there yet to just, oh, it makes sense to run out and do this for the lifetime of this system. Like you buy the system, you're going to use it for five years. We don't know what's going to happen over the next two, three, four years. And so like a year from now, there may be insanely cheap DDR4 PCIe Gen 5 CXL modules that you can just plug in. But if you're an AI researcher or somebody that's working on CXL in the cloud, this may be an ideal platform for you that is not you know, some sort of crazy dual socket bleeding edge server that's going to cost on the order of, you know, $20,000. You can start doing your software development and your testing in different CXL scenarios with a platform like this, because you can use NUMA CTL and change the weighting and mess with how much memory is actually in the system versus how much memory is configured on the CXL module, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the modules do need absurd cooling, like they're designed for server use. So if you use it in a workstation, you're going to need crazy, crazy cooling for this as well. But I think this is a lot of fun. This is supported properly in workstation. And I think that uh, 
accidentally or on purpose, I think AMD is uh, the first to be able to do this here because I tried doing all the CXL stuff and uh, the Sapphire Rapids and Sapphire Rapids refresh workstations that I have, and it was uh, it was a no go. ARM was an another interesting, different story that might be a different video, but not like this is pretty cool. If you're into CXL and research, I was very surprised to find that this works. In terms of other BIOS updates and other quality of life improvements, the BIOS does have a ton of quality of life improvements. Like I say, the memory training. Memory training alone is worth watching the V-Color video um, because I was surprised that DDR5, 7200, and 8000 could be this good even on motherboards that I've had since they launched over a year ago. It's like, oh... This is just a software thing. Well, it's probably a hardware availability thing too, because you know those uh, <laughs> those eight thousand kits were quite expensive on Newegg. Um, so yeah, maybe I need a V color contact or something. <laughs> maybe they'll let me bum memory in the future. I don't know. <laughs> oh lord! But I was surprised that uh, that it worked as well as it does. Interestingly, also I'll spoil the other video: the DDR five seventy two hundred versus eight thousand. There's really not a lot of difference from a practical standpoint because the cast latency of seventy two hundred is lower. So it's like it's just really different timing configuration. But the seventy two hundred kit came with heat spreaders, and the eight thousand kit did not. And I think V color missed the boat on having the heat spreaders but uh, you know check out the other video now even though the asus board is right out at least until they update the bios and which if they do i'll update the thread on the forum the azrock motherboard is also pretty viable let's take a look at that this is cxl on threadripper on the arrow d other motherboards and so this is the 12.13 version which is posted on azrock's website at the time that i'm doing this video that may be important you know, you may have to use this specific BIOS version if it's locked down. But here on the screen, we can see DF options for how we want to do CXL, CXL interleaving. If we want to interleave our CXL device with main memory, you can use NUMA CTL to fine tune that theoretically. And then we've got CXL common options, which gives you more general controls of CXL options. But basically, you just need to enable it, and then you can control it from here. Now, another utility that you might have noticed on screen is the ESMI utility. This depends on the AMD underscore HSMP option being enabled in BIOS. On some motherboard BIOSes, auto is enabled, but enabled is not fully enabled. So you want to enable it as opposed to disable it, or as opposed to, like, just set it to enable, even if it's on auto and it seems like it's working, uh, enabled. I did have to mod probe AMD underscore HSMP. It's not auto loaded on our 24.04. Different distros will have different defaults, but mod probe that to insert the module. And then you can run the ESMI utility and you can see a lot of useful things about your system. This is the path to Ryzen master software on Linux that's fully open source. This exposes the whole control plane for uh, power and fabric control and clocks and a whole bunch of other details. <laughs> and being able to tweak things within reason. We can see how many joules each core is using, which is amazing. This is just useful to compare the Intel memory latency checker utility with, uh, you know, in terms of like what's going on with memory, how's interleaving working, are we getting more than 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth? HSMP is like, oh, in this configuration with the DDR5-8000, we've got 256 gigabytes per second, so the absolute theoretical max, and we are seeing like 201 gigabytes per second with this memory kit. ASUS does not expose CXL common options and the CXL options under DF with the beta BIOS that's on their website currently. That's unfortunate. So it, it's I tried using the module anyway, and it initialized 128 gigs of the 512 gigs that's on this card, on the, on the on this smart modular CXL, it's 512 gigabytes. So, but only 128 gigabytes of this module showed up on the ASUS TRX50. I don't know why. So your options for this, at least the Aero D and the uh, ASRock board, but not currently. I wouldn't recommend currently the ASUS TRX50, but check that forum thread because I'll update it if there's a BIOS update. And if you go in your BIOS and you see CXL common options, there's a good chance that it'll work in some slot on the motherboard. So yeah, woo! If this is exciting or you want to see more about this or have me do some more testing on WRX90 motherboards, I've only got the one, um, I've got the ASUS WRX90, and the ASRock WRX90, and that's it. So let me know. All right, I'm going to this has been a quick look at CXL on Threadripper. It works, it's a thing, you can actually do stuff with it. Yeah, turns out you can. All right, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up with the forum. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.